Hi, I'm Grant, I'm back with Visual Politic, I'm bald, I'm British, and unlike the previous host of this channel, I can't grow a beard, so please guys, stop asking. Twenty twenty is getting really very complicated for Donald Trump. More than one hundred and twenty thousand coronavirus deaths in the United States, tens of millions of unemployed people, and continuing street protests against racism and police brutality. And although it may have got lost in all the drama that has been happening recently, just not forget that just a little while ago, Trump was facing impeachment. Do you guys remember that? If you didn't, don't worry, I honestly didn't either. A situation from which he emerged victorious, but during which he was called all sorts of things and none of them were very nice. No, it was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security and our fundamental values. Corrupting an election to keep oneself in office is perhaps the most abusive and destructive violation of one's oath of office that I can imagine. Well, you could say it louder, but you couldn't really be any clearer. And as a side note, if you think this accusation is already serious, the most important thing is to pay attention to who made it. Because my visual politic nerds, these words were not uttered by an opposition leader, but by a real life GOP senator, and not just any senator. This is Mitt Romney, one of the most important political figures in the political party that supports decisions and legislation made by the Trump administration. Administration. So, in the face of impeachment, Romney had to make a difficult decision. Choose between being faithful to his own judgement or respecting party discipline. And watch carefully because Mitt Romney is not just any old senator. His political career in the Republican Party is a very long one. He was governor of the state of Massachusetts, participated in the 2008 presidential primary and was the Republican nominee who faced Obama's re-election in 2012. Since last year, he has also been a Republican senator for Utah for a six-year term, a post that he could be in until January 2025. So, my visual politic wonks, Trump overcame impeachment along with other reasons because his fellow Republicans voted mostly against testimony that could have proved key, such as that of John Bolton, national security advisor in the Trump administration itself. We all remember John Bolton, right? He's got a book out now, so you'll probably have seen him on literally every TV channel. For this reason, many analysts believe that the GOP definitively surrendered to Trumpism that day. However, Romney's rebel vote left open a small crack in Donald Trump's Republican armour, a crack that has now been made worse during the recent events of 2020. And, my visual politic nerds, one question starts to pop up. Could there be an alternative to Trump? Can the senator for Utah be the spearhead of a new movement called on to defeat Trumpism? And, you'd best pay attention, because the last public appearance of Romney was him taking part in the Washington anti-racism marches on the White House. <laughs> We need a voice against racism. We need many voices against racism and against brutality. We need to stand up and say that Black Lives Matter. And you know what? If there's one thing Romney can boast about, it's consistency and honesty. As soon as he took the post of senator, before we even knew there was going to be an impeachment against the president, Romney was already predicting how he would manage his loyalty to Donald Trump. Listen up. He's by and large followed the Republican playbook, so I'll be with him. The places where I'm not with him from time to time would be matters of conduct or communication that I think are highly divisive or misogynistic or anti-immigrant. In places like that, I think it's important for my own personal integrity to stand up and say, no, I disagree with that. Mitt Romney, Republican Senator from Utah. Okay, so possibly Romney's chance to be President of the United States is over, but his influence could still be very important for the future of the Republican Party. That's why here on Visual Politics today, Today, we're going to review his trajectory, his clashes with President Trump and his political position. Let's get moving. King Midas Mitt Romney and Donald Trump have one thing in common. They're both millionaires. In fact, they're more than millionaires. They're multi-millionaires. But that's about as far as the similarities go. While Trump is a guy prone to show and ostentation, Romney is the exact opposite. In a word, scandal is not associated with him at all. We are talking about a discreet person with an exemplary family life and one who is also heavily influenced by his religion. 
Indeed, this has all been much debated throughout his political career because Romney is a Mormon and less than 2% of Americans are Mormons. So many people wondered if religious prejudices would act against him. Given his political journey, it is clear that this was not the case. And that is because of Mormon's magic underwear. Not really. Let me explain. Mitt Romney's father was the governor of Michigan and a member of Richard Nixon's first government. It seems clear that belonging to such an influential family was an important advantage. Yet, the now senator for Utah wasted no time. After graduating from the law and business schools of the prestigious Harvard University, he began a successful career as a businessman. After a brief stint at the Boston Consulting Group, Romney was signed by a rival consultant, Bain and Company. There, he was chosen to lead the launch of Bain Capital, currently one of the leading venture capital funds in the entire world. As an investor, Romney backed hugely successful firms such as Staples, an office supply chain, and the world-famous Domino's Pizza. These merits led to Romney eventually being named the CEO of Bain & Company. All of this allowed him to accumulate a personal fortune of more than $200 million. But when and how did he start his political career? This is the question that many of you will be wondering. So, you see, in the US there's a state where Mormons are the majority, the state of Utah. Its capital is Salt Lake City. So, in the 1990s, it became public that Salt Lake City authorities had bribed a lot of members of the International Olympic Committee to host the 2002 Winter Olympics. <gasps> Bribery in a major sporting competition? Surely not! However, at the time, that was a tremendous scandal. A scandal that rocked world sport, the reputation of the Olympic Games, and left the organising committee very badly affected. No one and I mean absolutely no one wanted to sponsor those games and have their name linked to corruption. Utah's prestige, such as it is, was at stake. So the question is, what did they do next? And then Romney stepped in and averted disaster. They named this new King Midas, who ran Bain and Company, as the head of the organising committee. Salt Lake City authorities did their best to organise those games, and Romney managed this. He eliminated a $379 million deficit and ultimately made Salt Lake 2020 a great success, praised by the International Olympic Committee. No, really, that's right. Romney achieved close to a real miracle, an Olympic Games that weren't a financial disaster. People of America, Utah, and Salt Lake City, you have given the world superb games. You have reassured us that people from all countries can live peacefully together. Thank you. Jacques Roga, president of the International Olympic Committee during the closing ceremony of the Salt Lake City 2002 Olympic Games. Surplus from Winter Olympics is $56 million. And so, my visual politic politifans, this success prompted Romney to jump back into politics. And I say jumped back because he had previously chosen to be a senator, but he was pitted against the eternal Massachusetts senator, Ted Kennedy, none other than JFK's brother, and for decades, one of the great kingpins of the Democratic Party. So, he never really stood a chance. Now, things had changed. And you know what? When he was elected governor of Massachusetts, he showed that his reputation as a King Midas was well deserved. He inherited a budget deficit of $3 billion and, just two years later, that had been transformed into a surplus of $700 million. His greatest achievement, though, was his healthcare reform, a reform negotiated with the Democratic opposition that dominated the Massachusetts Legislative Chamber. With this reform, Romney put in place a system that forces all citizens to take out private health insurance to solve the state's most pressing social problem, the lack of medical coverage of the uninsured. Of course, people who didn't have enough resources to take out a policy received help from the state. It's a pretty meaningful model, don't you think? It ensures that everyone has medical coverage, stimulates competition between insurers, and the economies of scale are greater, reducing policy costs and improving service. And the cost of the state is relatively low. We say that said to citizens who are making three times federal poverty or more, that's $54,000 a year in our state for a family of four, you have to buy a policy that you can afford and, um, uh, and no more showing up at the hospital expecting someone else to pay your way. For people earning less than three times federal poverty, we, we the state will subsidize their purchase of a policy. They choose the policy they want, we subsidize its purchase. And that way we get everybody insured. Romney was quite the rising political star, so he gave up seeking re-election as governor of Massachusetts in order to run in the Republican primaries. However, he was late in joining the race for Bush's successor. By the time he arrived, it was already clear that John McCain would be the Republicans' next choice. As I'm sure we all remember, Obama walked through that presidential election, and Romney immediately got to work on a new opportunity. 
The American ideals of economic freedom and opportunity need a clear and unapologetic defense, and I intend to make it because I have lived it. Mitt Romney. Finally, in 2012, the stage was set. Romney was unrivaled in the Republican primaries. And, more importantly for a US election bid, his campaign obtained huge amounts of funding. By the way, among Romney's business support, there were a few, how should I best put this, unstable elements? Mitt is tough, he is smart, he is sharp. He is not going to allow bad things to continue to happen to this country that we all love. So Governor Romney, go out and get him. You can do it. Donald Trump in 2012. Mitt Romney is a mixed up man who doesn't have a clue. No wonder he lost. Donald Trump in 2016. So, by now, I think we are all pretty familiar with Donald Trump and his questionable relationship with truth and coherence. The thing is, Romney lost to Obama. And as you know, the GOP then fell into Trump's tiny hands. However, my visual politic nerds, if there is one person who is never a fan of the current tenant of the White House, it is Mitt Romney. Check this out. A Republican with principles? So, to begin with, Romney's profile was perfect for reaching the White House. However, he had one small problem. He lacked charisma with the American population. To be fair to him, Romney might be someone who'd be better as an actual president than as a candidate. Something insurmountable when your rival is a guy as media savvy, photogenic, and as popular as Barack Obama. And congratulations to you, Mr. President, on your anniversary. I'm sure this was the mo most romantic place you could imagine <laughs> here, here with me. In addition, democratic messaging succeeded in introducing Romney as a top executive without any scruples. Someone capable of selling his own mother as long as it increased company profits. Mitt Romney attacked 47% of Americans who pay no income tax, including veterans, elderly, the disabled. My job is not to worry about those people. Doesn't the president have to worry about everyone? I'm Barack Obama and I approve this message. What's interesting though, was that something was changing in the soul of the Republican Party. Just take a look at Clint Eastwood's speech at the 2012 Republican convention. I think it's maybe time what do you think for maybe a uh, businessman? How about that? A stellar businessman. Unfortunately for Republicans, and particularly Clint Eastwood, is that Americans preferred Obama's messaging. And when they did go looking for a businessman, there was no Romney. There was Donald Trump. Where are the shirts made? Yeah. Bangladesh. Well, it's good. We employ people in Bangladesh. It's ties? Where are the ties they made? Have to work These are too. beautiful ties. They are great ties. The ties are made in where? China? The ties are made in China. Having said that, Romney never wanted to see Trump in the White House. This is what he had to say about the current president when they were both fighting for the Republican nomination four years ago in 2016. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. He's playing the members of the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House, and all we get is a lousy hat. So now the question we have to ask is, so does Romney criticize everything Trump does? And the truth is, no. He himself acknowledges that some of the Trump administration's economic measures in the United States have worked much better than he expected. He has also supported most of the president's appointments that he's made in his administration. And in terms of foreign policy, he's what some would call a hawk, in that he agrees with the heavy-handed policy towards China and Iran. In other words, he agrees with what we might describe as Donald Trump's Republican agenda. But he hates Trump's methods and approaches that are at odds with the typical Republican agenda. And the impeachment trial was the moment when Romney went, you know what? This fall and no further. I've had enough. Yeah, that was really Scottish. I'm sorry. But when I get angry, it comes out. The president asked a foreign government to investigate his political rival. The president withheld vital military funds from that government to press it to do so. The president delayed funds for an American ally at war with Russian invaders. The president's purpose was personal and political. Accordingly, the president is guilty of an appalling abuse of public trust. Only two Republican senators voted with the Democratic Party to call for more witnesses, including John Bolton, who had asked to testify. Of course, Romney was one of them, but it didn't matter. The Republican majority laid down the petition. And finally, in the decisive vote, Romney was the only Republican senator to go against Trump. However, November's elections are getting closer. If Trump is defeated, the GOP will have to begin a new phase. And the question is, what could Romney contribute then? <laughs> Thank you.
Romney 2024? Romney's vote at impeachment corrects one of his biggest mistakes as a former candidate, which is that instead of going to the centre of the political space in search of more votes, he chose instead to placate the Tea Party at the time of the primaries for the 2016 elections. I'm sure you all remember the Tea Party. And you know, up in Alaska, we have a smaller version of Tea Party up there, and we call it Ice Tea. The Tea Party is a GOP movement that, about a decade ago, had a lot of influence within the organisation. In general, it is a movement that considers taxes to be theft, that promotes a tough political agenda, and above all, is a very nationalist movement. Really nationalist, in fact. In any case, in 2012, Romney started from a moderate economic plan that gradually changed to bring about huge reforms. To give you an idea, one of the biggest electoral tricks was to put a huge tax cut in place. A much larger reduction than Trump made. Check it out. Romney's tax reform meant a 20% drop for all taxpayers. The maximum rate dropped to 28%, while with Trump it stayed at 37%. As Trump has done, Romney also pledged to make a huge reduction in taxing corporate profits. And that is not all. Romney also promised a total tax exemption for capital income that produced profits of under $200,000. And to offset all of these tax cuts, Romney pledged to reduce public spending to below 20% of US GDP. So, in other words, Romney pledged to carry out a complete revolution that would have made the United States one of the most fiscally attractive countries in the world. Of course, you know that election campaigns promise everything. But unlike Trump, Romney is a strong advocate of budget balance. And I don't know, probably if he were president, he wouldn't have been able to carry out this change entirely. But in any case, the course was clear. Mitt Romney is a true Republican, even though some of his fellow politicians have reproached him for things like this. How Mitt Romney's healthcare experts helped design Obamacare. So yes, my visual politicos, you surely know that Obama's health reform has been systematically criticized by every Republican that has ever existed from the start. They find it very expensive, and Trump has tried to cancel it several times, although he has not yet succeeded. The fact is that the famous Obamacare was inspired by the Massachusetts reform that Mitt Romney implemented when he was governor. The idea makes sense. Forcing everyone to have private health insurance sets two things in motion. One, that with greater demand, insurance companies have more room to lower prices and compete with each other on a level playing field. And two, whoever can't afford it can be given help so they can pay for the policies. Then there's already the debate on how this help has to be, and whether the state has to take part or not in order to compete. In fact, perhaps these are the biggest political differences. In any case, we will talk about the health system in the United States very soon in another video. And let's be honest, probably until the end of time. In terms of foreign policy, Romney is a strong advocate of trade with Mexico and Canada, so he probably wouldn't have gone with NAFTA, and he would not have put tariffs on the European Union either. For Romney, these countries in North America and Europe are strong allies of the United States, and so the heavy hand and all the protectionist measures must be limited only to China. So, finally, a lot of you may be wondering, will Romney really find himself enough support to fight for the leadership of post-Trump republicanism? Probably not, but his collaborators such as Orrin Cass have launched American Compass, a new movement within the Republican Party that aspires to lead the way for the centre-right in the coming years. Make a note of names like Marco Rubio or Tom Cotton as candidates for the upcoming Republican primaries. But now, as always, we leave the questions over to you. Would you like to see Mitt Romney as a candidate for the 2024 presidential election? Do you think Trump will run again in 2020? And how do I get some of that magic Mormon underwear? Leave your answers in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to Visual Politic if you haven't already. There's a little alarm button down there which you can click if you want to get updates whenever our videos come out. Also, don't forget to check out our friends on the Reconsider Media podcast. All of the vocals in this episode that weren't mine were provided by them. Also, I host a podcast called Making Europe Grant Again. I wonder where I got that slogan from. If you're interested in a more comedic take on the news, it's me and a bunch of my comedian friends talking about politics and world events. You can find it on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, or whatever app you use to download your podcasts. Please check it out. And as always, we hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.